But if you do have those tight quadriceps, knees or ankles, hero pose or virasana, again, squeezing the block between your ankles and sitting down. Or if that's too much for you, then you can always get another block. So two blocks should feel a lot more comfortable. But that's one way you can kind of sit in front of your tailbone. Have this nice curve, right? We're just meant to have this curve in our back, in our thoracic, between our thoracic and our lumbar. So that kind of helps us, but it does kind of help to open up here in this area here. So whatever seat you feel comfortable in, if you have, if you really want to open up your hips, then Sukhasana, of course, easy seat, right? The cross-legged pose, cross-legged seat is probably a good bet for you. So this is for your hips and the other one for your ankles, knees. All right, so let's find some grounding in your seat to begin. And just gently closing the eyes. And then beginning to take a few deep breaths in and out through the nose. Let's start to bring ourselves into this space. So just beginning to become aware of and whatever is touching the ground, whether it's your knees and your sitting bones. Let that area get nice and heavy. Almost as if it's rooting down and being supported. Feeling the gravitational pull as you lift up from that foundation lifting from the waist, opening up that chest, relaxing the shoulders and again taking the deep breath. Let's move into bellows breath or bashtrika. This is just a deep inhale in through the nostrils. If your nose is plugged, you can use your mouth, but it's gonna be like a sharp inhale with your abdomen expanding and a sharp exhale, your abdomen contracting. It's gonna be kind of fast. We're gonna do, let's do 20 breaths here. So. You can do this on your own. I'll just go ahead and, and count. Ready? If, um, and then beginning now. And letting your breath come back to normal. Let yourself feel the, the experience of this breath. You might be getting a little warmer, a little tingling sensation. The bostrica or the bellows breath really helps you to bring your energy level up. So if you're ever feeling tired in the middle of the day or you need more energy, pick me up. That, that breath will really help you change that inner state. So let's take a big deep breath in and a deep breath out as we begin to move into our child's pose. So sitting down onto our heels, opening up your knees to whatever feels good for you. This, by the way, is also a really great restorative pose. So if you're feeling really just wiped out completely, on every level, then you can grab a cushion or a pillow and put that right here. And then just let yourself just wrap, relax into it. You can even rest your side of your temple. And it's such a nice pose to just give yourself some love. Also helps with your opening up your hips too. And of course you guys can always come to this posture this asana anytime you need to take a break in this class and don't ever worry. I've, I've definitely taken breaks in the middle of classes in the front of the room. It's okay. You have to listen to your body. There's a little bit of that push we have to do, but, but again, if you're feeling really, really tired and off, then take care of yourself. You can just open and close the hands here. 
as we allow the hips to begin to open, maybe you can reach forward a little bit. You can feel the space. Breathing. And then making maybe making some circles with the hands and wrists if you can here. And then slowly let's make our way up to tabletop. So hands and wrists underneath your shoulders and then your knees underneath the hips. Again, thinking about your core here, the Uddiya Bandha, navel coming in. And then let's begin to move into cat cow. So I'm just gonna let you guys do a free movement to start with. Just let yourself move into these postures and just feeling, maybe you're just tweaking it a little bit, seeing how you feel. A little bit of looking to different sides while you're in cow. Moving back and forth in cat. Again, doesn't yoga does not have to be very, very still poses. Sometimes the poses are you're finding stillness in them, but there are there are types where you can use some dynamic movement too. If you want to stretch out your toes. Lean onto your toes and move side to side. And feel them opening up. And then let's go ahead and move into our first downward facing dog. So lift those hips up, keep those knees bent, relax the head down. Let's start with the hands. So make sure that all 10 fingers are planted, the palms of your hands pushing away from the ground. And then again, shoulders lift away from the ears. So move the shoulders away from the ears and then just rotate the shoulders externally so that it's your armpits are beginning to face each other. So push the ground away, elongate that spine, lift the tailbone all the way up to the ceiling, hold that core in, Uddiya Bandha, and then Mula Bandha, pelvic floor moving up. And then slowly let's begin to walk the dog here. So keep that spine elongated, tailbone lifted. So again, you wanna be in the shape of a mountain. That's the idea. In some certain styles of yoga, they call this mountain pose or tadasana. So sometimes it can get confusing. Most places they call it downward facing dog. So breathe here and then just begin to start to bring your heels down towards the ground. And begin to bring the backs of your legs towards the back of the room. And then begin to feel your sitting bones spreading apart. Slowly look up at your hands and let's walk our feet to the back of our wrists. And then here again, feet are about hip width distance apart. Let your whole spine just elongate here, remembering your core, grabbing opposite elbows if that feels okay to you. And then just kind of play around with the weight of in your foot here. Try to see how it feels towards the back. What, what areas is it stretching? And then try to see if you can bring it forward. And then you can plant both feet down and just evenly distribute that weight push the feet away from the ground. And then if you'd like, you can gently rock side to side here. So a little twist here, moving to the right foot as you keep that head relaxed and elongating down to the floor. And then slowly let's breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Come over to the left foot. And just kind of finding the balance and all those little bones in your feet. feeling your relation to the gravity. And then slowly let's roll all the way up, push the ground away with your feet, come all the way up into standing. And once you're up, roll those shoulders back, relax the shoulders down. And just take a breath here. We're gonna move into our sun salutations. So coming to the top of the mat, 
And then if you can, bring your toes and heels together. If that feels really awkward or not very balanced, then you can separate your feet. But if you can, bring your toes and heels together. Moving into Tadasana. So again, thinking about pushing the feet down. Thinking about Uriya Bandha, navel coming in. And then Mula Bandha, pelvic floor moving up. And then opening up that chest, relaxing the shoulders. Inhale, reach all the way up. So as much as you're grounding your feet, lift those arms up, reach up, and reach over. So open up that heart. Breathe here as you keep reaching up. Little bitty back bend here. And then as you exhale, let's swan dive all the way down into four bend again. So again, thinking about Uriya Bandha. And then bringing your hands down. So again, if this is a lot more comfortable for you to have a block here, the back of your legs, bend the knees if you need to. Again, whatever feels comfortable for you, but just try to see if you can relax the head and let the spine be long here and feel that nice stretch in the back of your legs. We're gonna do a halfway lift. So inhale, hands to the shins. Elongate the back, look up as far as you can, relax your shoulders and really open up that chest. Lift the tailbone up towards the ceiling, feel the stretch and breathe. Slowly lower down, bring your hands to the ground. Let's step back with the right foot, drop the right knee down, adjust the front foot here and then slowly start to lunge forward. So you can either stay in lunge here with your hands on the ground you can always use the blocks here if this feels better. If you feel like you can come up, you can come up. But again, make sure you're trying to bring your hips facing forward. Not There's not a twist here. It's just nice and square. And then if you feel comfortable, let's drop the heart and head back. Look up towards the ceiling. Keep pulling that chest up towards the ceiling. Moving your hips forward, breathe and feel that stretch. Slowly come forward. Left foot to meet the right in either tabletop or plank. Nice strong plank or tabletop here as you hold the core in. Moving forward of your wrist, squeezing your elbows into the body and then slowly lowering down to the abdomen keeping your hands planted right next to the chest. Let's ground the legs, the pelvis, relax the shoulders and squeeze the elbows into the body as you inhale, moving into either Cobra One, chest moving forward, head looking straight ahead, relax the shoulders, or you can straighten the arms. Again, the chest continuously moving forward legs and pelvis heavy on the floor and then slowly curling the toes under and then moving into downward facing dog so again thinking about the hands the armpits the spine Uriya Bandha Mula Bandha tailbone looking going up to the ceiling legs moving back and there's almost a feeling of this as if you're trying to Pull the mat apart with your hands and your feet in opposite directions. Breathe. And then inhale, let's bring the right foot forward, left foot down, both hips forward, and then your version of lunge. Making sure the hips are nice and square. Feeling that stretch here as you breathe. Opening up, if that feels good for you. And then slowly bringing the hands down, bringing the left foot to meet the right, back into forward bend. Longing that spine, lifting the tailbone up to the ceiling, push the ground away with your feet as you inhale, Reaching all the way up, dropping the heart and head back, grounding with your feet, lifting up with your arms. And then exhale, bringing the palms to the heart center, palms to the side. Take a couple of breaths here. Notice how you feel. 
and then we're just going to move just a little bit faster on the left side and then we're going to do a variation on the lunge. So grounding the feet as you inhale, let's raise our arms up, reach up, drop back, exhale, swan dive into forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift, extend that spine, open up that chest. Exhale, bend the knee, step back with the left foot and then bring the left knee down on the floor. And then see if you can walk your right foot to the outside of your hands. So this is a kind of a lizard variation. And then feel that stretch here. And then maybe see if you can drop yourself down a little bit to the elbows. If not, you can always bring the blocks. Bring yourself down a little bit down here like this. So again, just making sure that you're both hips facing forward. If it feels comfortable for you, you can start to open up that right foot and then just start to move towards the outside blade of the foot. So towards the pinky and open up your hips just a little bit more here in this position or in your, during your, in on your elbows or lower. And breathe into your hip. It should be talking to you. It should be saying, hello, I'm here. Keep breathing. And slowly lower that foot down and then slowly come up to the hands. For some of you, it might be really harsh on your knee here. You can always fold your yoga mat over or put a pillow or something so that your knee is comfortable. Slowly walk your right foot back between your hands. And then this time the right foot meets the left in either plank or tabletop. And you can kind of shake that out. Maybe that feels better to shake your hip out a little bit. And then let's lower down with control, squeeze the elbows into the body. And then moving into your version of Cobra. As you inhale and then exhale into downward facing dog. And then this time bringing that left foot forward. And then so try to see if you can bring that left foot out to the outside of the left hand. And again, if this, if this motion is really hard, you can always come halfway, drop the knee, bring that foot. It doesn't have to look exactly the same, but try to see if you can get that left foot to the outside of the left hand. And then slowly, just as you breathe, look forward and hinge those hips forward. Breathe, keep your chest open. And then this side might be even tighter. This time maybe your left is, is yelling <laughs> instead of just talking to you. And then maybe see how that feels, just dropping down a little bit. Again, with or without the block. Still keep those hips forward. Breathe. And if it feels all right for you, see if you can Come to the outside blade of the left foot. So over where the pinky is, opening up the hips further as your hips lunges forward. And just breathe. Slowly bring that foot back, lifting up, bringing that left foot to the center. And then now moving that left foot to meet that right foot, oh, sorry, the right foot to meet the left, coming back into forward bend. And then push the ground away as you inhale, let's lift the arms all the way up, reach up, and then exhale, slowly bring the hands to the heart center and then relax the hands down. Very nice, feeling a little more open here. Great, so now we're gonna move into our chair series. So if you can, bring your toes and heels together, knees together, and if you want to, you can do the, squeeze the block between your legs. We're gonna bring our hands to the heart center and then start to send the hips back. Sit on that imaginary chair. Look forward, hold that Uddiya Bandha in. Uddiya Bandha and Mula Bandha is really gonna help you here. Ground the feet sink your hips down, lift the arms up, palms can be together or separated, and you're looking up towards the ceiling, arching the spine and breathing here. 
Think about Uddiya Bandha and Mula Bandha. Squeeze those knees together. Breathe as you keep lifting up with the arms. And then slowly standing up, bringing your palms to the heart center, releasing the palms and breathe. We'll move into clasping your hands behind your back, opening up the chest, moving into a forward bend here, slowly and gently with your flat back. Start to come all the way down into your forward bend, making sure you're balancing on the whole foot, pushing the ground away with your feet and letting your arms and your arms come behind you. Open up that chest, relax into it. You can relax the head, breathe. And then slowly and gently, making your way all the way up. And release the hands, you can shake it out. And then we're gonna move into some side stretches. So let your feet come to the edges of your mat. Again, thinking about grounding the feet down holding that core in. As you inhale, lift the arms up. Allow your right wrist to grab the left wrist and really reach up towards the ceiling. And then slowly as you exhale, let's begin to sway to the right. So trying to think about your Uddiya Bandha, the Mula Bandha. Maybe the right shoulder needs to come up a little bit more forward so that your chest is nice and open. Breathe here as you continuously reach. Let those feet down, reach up and over and breathe and feel that stretch on the left side of your body. And slowly as you exhale, come back. Let's switch hands, switch wrists, inhale, lift. And exhale, slowly swing over to the left this time, keeping the chest open, keeping your spine nice and long, reaching up and over, breathe. Ground those feet. Left shoulder coming forward just a little bit. And then slowly as you inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, release the hands. Roll the shoulders here a bit. And then start to bring your feet about hip width distance apart. Slowly bend down and then Start to put your hands, if you can put the hands or step on your hands, all the way up to the wrists, or you can just step on your, wherever you can on your hands. And then slowly begin to use the leverage. So pull your arms down, pull the legs down, or start to pull your body down with your hands. So slowly allowing the hips to move up. Breathe here. And then coming and releasing the hands, let's grab your toes. See if you can hold on to the toes here. And then this time we're going to open up the chest, look up towards the ceiling. So look up as high as you can. Push the toes down as you hold them. Uriya Bandha. Mula Bandha, bring that pelvic floor up and breathe and then slowly release. Coming all the way up as you inhale, rolling the shoulders back and taking a breath here. And then we'll move into a couple of uh, warrior poses before we move into this fun new one. I think it's a new one for you guys. I've never taught you guys. so. We'll try that. So well, let's open up our feet here. Moving into our warrior two. Let's start on the right side. So let's point the right foot towards the mat and then the back foot parallel to the mat. Let's open up the arms. So making sure that all of our body parts are working. So arms are extending in opposite directions. Feet are planted down. And then let's swing your hips over to the left here. So try to see if you can bring your tailbone, face your tailbone over to the left foot, and then slowly begin to bend that right knee, ground your feet, and then adjust your stance. So again, 
depending on your flexibility and your, the, your height, you want to make sure, again, that this knee stays behind the toes. Open up here and then look over the right hand. Keep breathing, keep lifting that chest up. Uriya Bandha, navel coming in, Mula Bandha, pelvic floor coming up. That's really going to help you keep your balance. Breathe. Reaching in opposite directions. Again, all 10 toes planted and working on the mat, feeling the muscles getting created. Breathe as you keep your chest open. And let's bring that right, uh, left hand down to the thigh. Lift that right arm up. So keep your knee bent here into reverse warrior. So looking up at the ceiling, reaching up, reaching over and breathing. And then slowly let's come back to warrior two. Straighten that knee, bring that foot forward. And then let's move into the other side. So left foot facing out. Right foot parallel. Let's swing those hips over to the right this time. Keep that, extending the arms out. Very good. And then start to bend that left knee. So again, eventually you want it to be at a 90 degree angle. But even if you're like right here and it's hurting and, it, and you're like breathing hard, that's so good because you're just creating that muscle memory so that you can lower down. So again, make sure that all your body parts are working over the left hand. Make sure you're planting that outside blade of your right foot down. Uriya Bandha, navel coming in. Mula Bandha, pelvic floor moving up. Keep chest here. Spine is tall, nice and proud. And breathe. And bringing your right hand down to the thigh, lifting the left arm up. Keep your knee bent, reach up and over in reverse warrior. And then slowly come back to warrior two. And then straighten out that right left knee. Let's bring the right foot to meet the left. And just take a breath here. Catch your breath before we move into our next posture, so half moon. I'm going to show you different variations of it, and maybe you guys can try it all with me. The first one is going to be near a wall with a block. So if you have these handy, just keeping it in your right hand. And then coming to the wall here, hopefully you have one nearby that you can use. And you're just going to sit back on your, on your wall here, maybe, maybe about four inches or three inches away from the wall. You're going to put your foot forward. So it's similar to the warrior two, just put your right foot forward facing one direction. And then you're gonna just place that block against the wall or near the wall. So you might have to kind of adjust depending on how close you are to the wall, but you're just gonna bring that block down and then slowly start to, okay, I'm gonna move back so I don't, hit this fig tree, <laughs> you're going to slowly start to put the weight onto that right hand on top of the block and then slowly begin to lift your left leg up. So that right foot, the toes are facing the block and then your, your glutes, your buttocks is hitting the wall. So it's helping you to balance. So this is the half moon posture. And so you can either bring your hands to the hip or you can bring your arms up. You want to make sure that you're keeping this leg active. So this leg is continuously lifting. Both legs are actually active. And then eventually you can look up towards the ceiling and lift up here. So again, this is a variation done on the wall with the block. But as you can see, it's a nice stretch. And it's also a balancing practice as well. Well, not when you're on the wall. And we're going to try it on the mat. So again, you want to make sure that you feel OK if you have like Balancing, you know, vertigo, things like that, then I would still stay near the wall as much as possible. But if you're feeling adventurous and you want to give it a try, so how you're going to get into it is you're just going to put this block about 10 inches away from your pinky toe and slowly start to put the weight down here. And then always going to be really good to think about Uriya Bandha 
and then the Mula Bandha, right? So then you're going to slowly start to lift the left leg up. And again, the activation of both legs is what's really going to keep you nice and light. You really are not putting a lot of weight on this block at all. And then the more you work this leg, oopsie, the more it's hard to look at a screen and do this at the same time. So you want to find something again, a drishti, which is a focus point that's not moving to help you Again, holding that core in, lifting up that left leg, breathe. And then eventually looking up toward the ceiling. So again, a kind of fun little new practice. And then slowly lower down. Then you can even do a little forward bend here to relax before we try it on the other side. If you want to try it in the different, like a lower setting on the block, you can give that a try too. Maybe on the next one. Or you want to just try with your hands. You can just try directly with your hands. Again, it's, this is kind of play time. We used to do this in yoga class a lot. Again, activating that left leg is the key, holding that core in and then just finding your balance. Rotating that chest up towards the ceiling, opening up. Woo! Again, looking at the screen does not help. Woo! Okay, you can shake it all out here. Hopefully you guys are having fun trying it. <laughs> all right, let's do the other side. So left side on the wall. Pointing the left foot towards the block this time. And then coming again about three inches or four inches away from the wall placing your left hand on the block and then beginning to lift up that right leg and then lifting the arms up. Oh, it's so nice on the wall. Yeah, it's like you can do this all day. But again, it's a good practice to think about all the elements without worrying about balance. So think about again, activating that leg, keeps reaching out and up and then rotating yourself up towards the ceiling as you breathe. And then slowly lowering down. And then just give it a try on the mat. Again, so the block comes about maybe 10 inches away from that pinky toe of the left foot, placing your hand on the block, slowly lifting up that left leg, oh, sorry, right leg. And then make sure that you're planting your left foot down. And bring your hands to the hip. Breathe here. Again, however much you work, that right leg is really going to help you to feel light and find that posture. And raise the arm up. your balance. If you fall out, it's okay. You just come back out and try again. You can try it without the block. Hand about 10 inches in front of the pinky toe. Extend that leg. Lift it up. Plant that right, the left big toe down. And breathe. And then slowly and gently lower down. So always come down nice with mindfulness. And moving into that forward bend if that feels good for you. And then let's move into child's pose. So always after a kind of a big posture like that where you're using a lot of body power and brain power. It's nice to kind of rest it yourself rest here. Mm 
And just notice that breath just coming back to normal. And then slowly and gently, let's begin to bring our body down to the floor. Chin and chest down, arms at the sides. And then moving into our spine series a little bit. So moving into working out our spine. We're gonna try and bring our toes and heels together and then reach back with the arms as you inhale. Let's lift the whole body up. So feel the crown of your head moving in the opposite direction of your toes. Lift the legs up. Lift the arms up, breathe with your chest open, relax the shoulders. And then slowly lower down. Rest your chin on the mat and then let your cheek rest. Take a breath here. So again, all of these postures these spine strengthening postures are so hard because you're moving completely against gravity. So you're trying to lift your body off gravity, but it's so great for working out all those muscles along the spine, helping you with your posture. Let's move with our arms extended out, again, chin to the mat. And then this time you're going to reach, shoot the arms out and then shoot the legs back. And then your head's gonna move forward. So we're gonna elongate the spine and then the arms, so you're moving in all different directions. As you inhale, let's lift up. Again, toes reaching back, head moving forward, arms reaching out. Lift everything up as you breathe. Open up that chest. Keep breathing. Lift up one more time. And then slowly with control, lowering yourself all the way down, bringing the chin to the mat arms at the sides and rest your opposite cheek on the mat and breathe. And we're gonna do our full bow here. So bending the knees and then grabbing your toes here, squeezing the legs together. As you inhale, let's kick the feet into the hands. So that automatically lifts you up, open up that chest, relax your shoulders, keep kicking and try to bring those knees together. Keep bringing those knees together, lift up, breathe here, lift up as high as you can one more time. And then exhale, slowly release down. Rest your chin on the mat first and then rest your cheek on the mat and breathe. And then slowly lifting up into a seated position. So having a seat on the floor, legs apart. Moving the fleshy part of your glutes away from you, sitting in front of the tailbone, pressing your chest forward, and then all 10 toes reaching up towards the ceiling. So slight flex in the foot. Start to face your right foot and then bring yourself down. So there's a mini twist happening here. See if you can keep that left glute down as you slowly bend towards the right. So again, you wanna make sure that you're trying to bring your chest towards the toes. And think about Uli Abanda, that navel coming in, Mula Banda. Slowly breathe and let kind of gravity help you. So good to be able to work with gravity. I was saying last night in class that one thing that we can always count on, right, is gravity is always going to be there for us. And sometimes it's always not always the best thing, but, <laughs> but it's always there. So it's nice to know and you can work with it and use it to your, to your advantage. Breathe. And then slowly, let's come all the way up. 
take a breath in the center first and then let's rotate our way over to the left side here. So again, this time trying to keep that right glute down. If it keeps popping up, you can slide a block under it, a cushion, maybe like a rolled up blanket or something, just so that you have something that you can ground down on. Again, just remember those toes, just being aware that you're not just flopping your legs to the side. It's always thinking about correct alignment. So again, here's a little bit of a torso twist. You should be feeling it in your hip, or at least I do. And let yourself bring your chest forward. Always thinking about flattening that back. There's a few compression postures, but most of the time that you're going to be thinking about straightening that back out. We do enough of the compression or forward bending on our own when we're not doing yoga. So it's nice to do the opposite. And then slowly let's lift up into the center. Take a breath. And then we're going to come down again. This, this is the, probably the most challenging time to keep your toes up is when you're slowly starting to bring yourself forward. So again, chest moving forward, spine is straight as much as possible. Really reach forward and breathe here. Maybe, you know, you're just not coming down very far because of your toes and that's okay. Just take your time. I didn't realize I was doing this for maybe a year or so just relaxing the foot and coming all the way down like this, but then realizing that that's not really what the posture is. So again, you know, you start to do the postures correctly and then you have really good habits of being in the right alignment. So once you do come to your resistance, you can kind of relax the head down a little bit, as long as your back is not curling too much. Breathe. And then slowly and gently, let's make our way all the way up. And then bend your knees. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. Grabbing the soles of your feet, grabbing the toes here and opening up. So again, you're trying to press your chest forward here. As you open up the hips. Using the strength of your arms. And then slowly lowering yourself down here. Maybe you're bringing the elbows to the inside of your knees as you continuously bring that chest forward. Thinking about Uriya Bandha, Mula Bandha. I say it to you guys as many times as I, it pops into my head because I always forget to. But if you think about spreading your sitting bones or your butt cheeks apart, it helps to bring you down a little bit more even as you just release the hips. Inhale, slowly come up and then exhale. Let's bring those knees together. Give yourself a nice little hug. And then from here, we can do a little twist. So let's just bring our left arm around both knees and then bring your right hand back. And if it's comfortable for you to put a block underneath the base of your spine to help lift, use that as leverage you can. Inhale to elongate and then exhale, slowly twist to the right. So use that left hand to help you twist just a little bit more, relax the shoulders, press the chest forward, open it up. Look over to the right as you breathe elongating that spine as you inhale and as you exhale, twisting and twisting and twisting. And then slowly inhale, come back to the center, switching the arms, so right arm hugging both knees, bringing that left hand back, elongating that spine, and then exhale, twisting all the way over to the left this time. See if you can plant those hips down and the feet down. Extend and elongate the chest and keep twisting and twisting over to the left. Again, you use the strength of your right hand and breathe. And then slowly come back to the center. And then exhale, you can release the legs forward and shake it all out. And then moving into our forward bend here. So 
Again, moving the fleshy parts away from you, sitting in front of the tailbone, pressing your chest forward, elongating that spine, relax the shoulders, and then all 10 toes facing the ceiling, slowly start to lower down, starting to bring your lower abdomen to the top of your thighs. So just imagining bringing your abdomen to the thighs, which is the same thing as bringing your chest forward. So all of these imagery is gonna help you to bring your attention to areas that you need to bring them to. See if you can grab whatever you can grab here. If, you, um, if you're really aware of your posture when you're doing this, if you're really aware of your body, I should say, what you can do is you can always get a strap here too. So this is just another way to use some props and tools. And then if, if you're having a hard time reaching your feet, you can always use the strap to elongate the spine and then bring yourself down a little bit using the strength of your arms. But just always making sure, especially when you're using these different props, you're listening to the body. You're not just trying to push through pain. You're actually being really mindful. Your knees can be bent here. If your knees are bent, then just keep elongating that spine, bringing it forward and then slowly start to straighten the knees. Let your heels move forward. And then once you get to that point of resistance, let your head relax here. Just breathe. And then slowly relaxing the hands. Releasing the strap, if you have one. And then slowly and gently making your way all the way up. And then one last pose before we move into Shavasana. Our fun boat. So bending the knees, putting the hands underneath the knees and extending so that your arms are straight. Open up that chest. Keep just lifting up the chest towards the ceiling. Start to release your feet off the ground and then see if you can do a half bolt, which is with your knees bent and your arms straight. See if you can do a full bolt. Ooh, hard to look that way and do it. Staring at the space between your toes. Oops. And extend your arms and your legs and squeeze those legs together. Think about that Mula Bandha, Udiya Bandha. Keep breathing. And then slowly lowering down your feet. Lowering all the way down onto your back. Take your time. Letting your feet flop open. Arms open at the sides. And just close your eyes. Breathe. Noticing your heartbeat. Feeling your whole body relaxing. And bring awareness to every part of your body. The toes and the feet, the fingers, the fingers, the hands, the arms, the legs, everything that's touching the ground, bring awareness of your body just sinking down. Let your breath be slow and rhythmic as you absorb the practice. Help you to assimilate it. Slowly and gently beginning to deepen your breathing, just bringing awareness into the fingers and the toes, wrists and the ankles. Deepening your breath, 
extending your arms out over your head, extending your legs in the opposite direction as you breathe. And then slowly bending your knees, rolling over to one side and then gently pressing your way back up into a seated position. So taking your time, whichever seat you prefer, Rasana, Sukhasana, just as long as it's comfortable. Once you find your seat, let yourself ground. And then just begin to feel the crown of your head lifting. And then just, just being aware of your neck. And you're making sure that it's not leaning forward, that everything is balancing. You should be able to feel a point, maybe tuck your chin in just a little bit. So you let your head rest right on top of your neck and shoulders and then just feel feel that relation to gravity from your sitting bones moving all the way up the spine and just to find that nice perfect balance with gravity when your bones are all stacked up against each other or on top of each other it's kind of like jenga Everything was aligned and perfect. You could probably make a really tall Jenga. So it doesn't really take much to, you don't have to have strength to stand tall. Just proper alignment. So let that breath move up and down the spine and feel your alignment, feel your relationship to the earth. And we're just going to slow down the breathing. We're going to move into box breathing. So just as if you're tracing a box, as you inhale, drawing up the side of the box, maybe for however many seconds you like, three, four, five, six, pause that breath and then draw the line at the top of the box. And then as you exhale, draw the line coming down the box. And then as you pause that breath, draw the line to close the box. So just in your mind, creating that box as you breathe. Inhale, pause, exhale, pause. Focus on that breath. Make sure that that breath is that perfect combination of ease, effort, and effortlessness. You don't have to push yourself overly. You know, some of us have that competitive nature within us, which is not a bad thing. It's definitely good. And sometimes it's nice to just let that go and just, just breathe and be. And while you're doing your breathing, I have a quote to share from Mastin Kip, who is an author. If you choose to see everything as a miracle, then where you are right now is perfect. There is nowhere to run to. There is nothing else to do except be in this moment and allow what is to be. From that place of radical acceptance, major change can happen. The first step in any transformational experience is acceptance and surrender to the present moment, the way that is. From that place, we have the awareness, humility, and power to change what is. So letting that sink into whether it's your yoga practice or whatever your new thing you're learning or just managing life in general. Radical acceptance. I like that. Especially with things that we don't have control over or who we don't have control over. It's a lesson for myself <laughs> and my daughter. 
We'll then gently begin to deepen your breathing and just moving into our short meditation just to end the session, finding your word. Maybe you have a word of the year. Mine is focus. And then you can even use a mantra like Om or I'm. If you're wanting to attract beauty, love, and abundance, Shreem is a good one. It's a bija mantra, seed mantra. So inhale and then silently think to yourself, Shreem, extending out that mmm sound. So whatever your focus is, let yourself favor that focus. Inviting you to bring your awareness to that space between the eyebrows. Let the breath be slow and rhythmic. And observe. Just observe. Slowly and gently beginning to deepen your breathing, bringing your awareness to the space. Bring the palms to your heart center, lifting the heart. And then just a silent practice of gratitude. Thinking of the things that you feel grateful for. There is take a moment to acknowledge yourself, give yourself a virtual pat on the back for showing up, waking up and showing up. Thank you for attending. And thank you for sharing your energy and your practice. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Namaste.